it has a, a decent a little sound to it give you guys a couple revs here it's back it's back baby the 1100 is back all fixed up got some new meat on her all right Welcome back to the channel. Out here riding around on the 750, showing it some love. Because I've been neglecting my first bike, my baby. What I learned on. What I've had some good times on and some bad times on. It's left me stranded a couple times. But she's all good now. It's part of learning and part of having an older bike which brings me to my next point in this video for my older guys or newer younger guys or newbies that buy an older bike or have an older bike I'm just gonna tell you guys how to take care of these older bikes okay these are not fuel injected bikes these are carbureted bikes uh, which means the carburetors can get gunked up if you don't take care of them and clean them out or if you have the bike sitting for a long time especially over the winter and you don't put fuel stabilizer in it and then run the vehicle or run the bike in this case to get that fuel stabilizer in the carburetors so it can keep that fuel that's in there already good and not have it get gummy or gunked up to where you go to start the bike next time and it's not getting enough fuel or running right because you got a bunch of crap and old gas and gummy gas in your carburetor so first things first getting an older bike first thing you want to do when you get an older bike is no matter what i don't care if whoever the guy you bought it from or whatever dealership you bought it from told you that they've done this stuff already but check and or change your spark plugs carburetors clean them so the first time you get the bike have you if you know how to do it or take it to a shop have them clean the carburetors i don't care if the guy who you bought it from or the dealership says they just cleaned it take it to another shop and have them clean them too and if they say they're good then that's when they're you know that they're good but clean them all right change out the spark plugs change out the air filter change your fluids which means your uh, brake fluid some a lot of guys forget that change your brake fluid uh, a lot of guys only think of the oil but that's something else that you have to change as well change your oil change your uh, coolant change that so that should be all your fluids right there on a the motorcycle uh, make sure you don't have a sticky throttle all right for an older bike make sure that throttle snaps back as you pull it down obviously without the bike off uh, when you're doing your walk around of the bike before you purchase it make sure that throttle you pulls all the way down and snaps all the way back out with no resistance uh, make sure your clutch lever does the same thing is able to be pulled in and snaps right back out make sure all your buttons up here work make sure your turn signals work and none of the bulbs are burnt out all right make sure your horn works make sure on this bike we have a choke make sure the choke works good and properly your on and off kill switch your starter button uh, 
make sure the key turns without any extra force um, something that's a quick fix for that which I'll tell you guys right now for older bikes because I've had an issue with this bike that I've fixed and have continuously fixed on this bike is I've just put some uh, dry lock lube in the cylinder uh, and then I've sprayed the key and then jammed the key up and down uh, in the ignition to get that lock dry lube all the way in those uh, I forgot what they're called but they're little things that go in uh, or go slide against the key so somebody comment down below if you remember or know what those are I forget I'm having a brain fart right now but put lock dry lube in there to get my key to turn nice and free like it's a brand new bike um, your tires make sure you're changing your tires and not letting your tires go completely bald or riding with completely bald tires especially if you get caught in the rain you're not gonna have a fun time neither is your wallet or your bones <laughs> so if you catch my drift there um, let's see what else um, making sure your fairing bolts are all good checking those I know um, I have done this I haven't always checked all my fairing bolts in uh, my older two bikes I usually check them every time I change my oil so that's kind of like my reminder uh, to check all my fluids in that uh, area or aspect of the bike so that lets me know all my bolts are good uh, chain motorcycle chain your brakes very important uh, that should have been at the top of the list or one of the things at the top of the list your brakes because you got a motorcycle most of the guys are going to be going fast uh, but need stopping power all right everything you drive you need stopping power and on a bike you need pretty good stopping power because uh, you do not want to have a bad day out here you have very little protection uh, and you want to be able to stop when you get into a situation or you want to be able to power out of a situation so that's one of the things that you guys should focus on when you're getting a, an older bike and this is stuff on how you keep an older bike running good I've had this bike for I think man has it been that long five six years now yeah around there and uh, the bike is still running good as you can see I'm still riding it um, I've been like I said earlier been neglecting it a little bit because I got a brand new bike and one to was so eager to ride that bike but this bike is still running good uh, something that I'm gonna do here shortly uh, like in that other previous video that I put out for you guys is it's time for a clutch change on this bike um, it's not terrible right now like obviously I'm still riding the bike but and uh, I know some other guys have had issues with their clutches where you go to ride the bike and they got nothing they are in first gear or second gear and they're holding their throttle down and their bike isn't moving or pulling them any fo forward any and their revs are going all the way up and that's how you know uh, it's time to change that clutch but basically I'm doing it now so that I don't run into a problem while let's say I'm out an hour away from home and my clutch decide, decides to finally go out and I'm an hour away from home and I need a tow home that's the situation where I don't want to run into it so I want to get the clutch changed before it happens so it's called pre-maintenance alright a lot of you newbies should learn that pre-maintenance uh, fixing the problem before it happens so stay, same thing with changing your oil that's a problem waiting to happen but you fix it before it creates a problem uh, with your brakes you fix your brakes before it becomes a problem for you before you're unable to stop your vehicle it's pre-maintenance but what else am I doing uh, putting new meat on these uh, rims on this bike so new tires a new chain uh, my chain is getting on to its last leg here uh, as you guys know I have a colored chain on here it's orange but it's on its last kind of leg here it's time for it to be changed out to a new one I think I'm gonna go with a gold chain this time 
Um, we're gonna try to have a shop figure out my issue with my clutch lever like I said in one of those previous videos that I put out for you guys because I got the brake one working but every time I put the shorty on this side my clutch side the bike won't start so hopefully those guys at Riders Choice my buddy Bela can figure that issue out uh, figured out the one on the 1100 so all that needed was the actual safety switch uh, the clutch safety switch and he got that bike up and running for me so hopefully he can figure this one out because he's worked on a lot of older bikes like this but those are the main reasons on how you can keep your older bikes running for a long time guys and as you guys know this is a 95 and it is now 2020 uh, the year 2020 and this is a 95 Jixxer 750 and it's still running good because I take care of it that's what you guys should do that's what my newbies you guys getting into motorcycling should do especially if you get an older bike you have to maintain these a lot better than you do newer bikes newer fuel injected bikes those bikes have computers to tell you uh, kind of sometimes what's wrong with them or going on because your check engine light will come on this is a 95 check engine light doesn't come on <laughs> you got your turn signals you got your high beam light your neutral light and your oil light that's it <laughs> you don't have a check engine light on your newer bikes you got check engine lights now you got your fuel gauges now you got clocks on the bikes now you got different rider aid modes on the bikes now uh, just like on my CBR 1000 RR the 2015 bike the Repsol it has all that stuff this bike doesn't so the maintenance you guys got to know it up here in your head in your brain on what to do for older bikes and all that stuff is the things that you guys need to know if you're gonna get an older bike if you're a newbie and you're looking for a cheap bike to get as your first bike to learn on to let's say if you're scared of dropping it that's definitely you want to get an older bike you do not want to get a brand new bike and then drop that brand new ten thousand fifteen thousand dollar bike trust me you don't want to do that get a thirteen hundred dollar bike which i paid for this bike four years ago and still riding to this day never dropped it once but i'm not saying that you won't drop yours but it might happen to you you might catch your foot or something or i know some of my buddies that i've ridden with the one guy actually uh put his foot down into a drain and didn't realize it and his foot just kept going down and he dropped his bike and thankfully he didn't break his ankle or anything but it happens stuff happens it's life life happens but get an older bike in case something like that does happen to you as you're learning to ride don't get don't do not get a brand new bike um as far as cc bikes talking about the power of the bike 600 cc 700 cc blah 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 and up leader bikes higher than that um you can start off with what you want to start off with guys i'll make another video explaining uh, a little bit more of that in detail but for a person that has never ever ridden a motorcycle before please don't start off on a 1000 that's kind of pretty much all i'm really going to say about it if you've ridden dirt bikes before you're all right with starting off with a 750 or a 1000 you'll be okay if you are disciplined in your throttle control uh, but if you've never ridden a motorcycle before don't start off with a 750 or a 1000 uh, start off with that 600 uh, you don't necessarily have to start off with a 300 uh, to me and this is just my personal opinion uh, it's more of for the girl newbie riders but a lot of guys still do ride the 300s because they can uh, flip that bike around a lot uh, like they can newer bikes nowadays but few years ago you weren't able to do that because the leader bikes were a lot heavier but now they're making leader bikes a lot more lighter in weight so that you're able to flick them around and do it the things that you want to with those bikes but that's all I'm gonna say for now uh, based on that I'll talk about that more in depth in a later video what bike you should start off with as newbies so just know that stuff that's your main point start off with a 
300, 600, or maybe a 750 if you've ridden dirt bikes before or been on two wheels before. Um, my next thing is, fellow rider right here, the bank. Gonna, I think that's all I got for you guys. That's how you want to maintain and keep longevity of your older bikes. You take care of them, all right? Let's just take care of them. So I'm going to end it right here, guys. Thank you guys for watching. Appreciate it. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. Have you ever felt? Are you listening? Damn.